Hey, hi friends. Welcome back to Bahu Automation Lab once again. And let's continue the session related to the APM TDD framework. Just right click on this program and now run this. Open our uh, APM server and I'll show you open our device. And here we go. We have successfully launched our Swag Lab app in our device. Okay, now let's uh, learn how to inspect the element for this and uh, try to automate some like uh, our first test case like login in where username yes. now let's try to automate one test case related to swag lab app so we have already created this uh, test cases and this is one is like a test ng class okay so in this class we have created this test case like a swag lab login in where username so let's uh, try to automate this test case okay so first of all in the uh while we are learning the selenium we have to inspect that element uh username and password if you want to log in on the like any website okay any web-based application the same way we have to inspect the element related to this swag lab app which is we have already installed this app in our device and we have to inspect this element like we need to inspect this username after that we need to inspect this password and 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 then we can simply um find that element into uh, uh, through our script and we can uh, like do the action on that one okay so first of all let's try to find out this uh, inspect uh, elements so how do we find out that elements in uh, apm so we have already installed this apm inspector app okay so everyone knows that so this is the most popular app and uh, every uh, quarterly basis on the few basis the new version of this app will get come okay so uh, we have to stay updated like a uh, lots of ch uh, changes i have seen here from the last uh, uh, couple of days like uh, like previous year we have like little bit of functionality here very little functionalities but nowadays they have launched a bit uh, and they are doing the like uh, if you guys doing the lots of changes in this so that this will be very useful to use okay so let's understand the features uh, and uh, possibly like how we can the, inspect the element using the uh, this apm inspector app okay uh, so apm inspector uh, is supporting to inspect the element from this app now we have to automate this uh, test case so first of all we need to inspect this username right so how to do that so first of all we need to set up the capability builder here okay you can here uh, go here you can see the save capabilities as well i have saved this one so you can create a, your capability builder and you can save as with the your name so that we not need to again and again we uh, set that uh, capabilities so here in APM inspector, this is the remote host. Okay, let's understand the features properly. Okay, related to the APM inspector, which is very important. Lots of people I have seen, they don't have the knowledge of this APM inspector. They just set up the capability and try to inspect the elements. So lots of functionality we can use. And this is a little tricky part. So identifying the element in the while working with the mobile applications. Okay, so how easy way you can and how correct way you can find that element, it will be uh, it will provide a more stability to your script so let's understand this properly okay watch this very carefully guys so this is our port number where we have setting set up uh, this uh, apm inspector like right? and this is our rem uh, remote path like wd hub okay so this is one we not required to clear, do any advanced setting here just uh, close this as it is so here we can set up any cloud if you have any cloud in your uh, like uh, organization like a social app uh, like browser stack lambda tsp cloud EFC, lots of clouds here and uh, they have type with these guys okay so you can easily uh, inspect the element related to this cloud as well but uh, we are using the emulator itself so we are setting our uh, like a custom capabilities here like a capability builder using capability builder so here we can see the attest session any attest session you have created so we can have that session as well and and this is the capability builder so first of all we need to set up the capabilities there. so how to set up these capabilities so here we have already defined same way we require to define here like a platform name like this one android so we can define like android after that let's uh, define the device name in the same way as i mentioned in the last lecture this is also very uh, case sensitive so we, we can't do any mistakes here so always like a p small n capital android is uh capital a app package name like a package name p capital everything we need to set up here we need to set up the test uh itself okay so this is the, our app activity name okay 
and this one is app uh, sorry this one is app package name and this one is our app activity name right so remote url we have already set up here so not required to set up this one so these are the our capability added so now I, I just want to show some difference here when we have set up this one we, if you get any error just read that error carefully like for example if i uh, set up this in, uh, name in small okay platform name so and i'm trying to set up the uh, start the activity so lots of people getting this error like platform name capability is important you must include platform name why it's uh, required because we have mm, uh, done some mistake here like platform name n should be capital letter right like this one so we can't make this type of mistake so read this error carefully and you can change that um, as as per the error and you can start your uh, like inspection the element so if i start this activity same way when we run the script from here the same way our response will go to this apm server i'm starting stopping this apm server previously we have run and uh, this one and same way it will start our app in this device and we can start inspecting our elements okay so let's start this one so i'm clicking on this start and i'm also opening events so here we can go in the apm server log logs are coming and uh, it will launch apm uh, through uh, swig lab app in our uh, device emulator device right so this one it's created now, now he, here we can see that screenshot related to this uh swig lab, okay but now the see the difference when i try to inspect this element okay so the difference here accessibility id okay uh here the like this this one is the like what we can say this is the attributes and are these are the values of that inspector elements okay so here we have seen one difference like this here we will be show the accessibility id only here, here not ui automator new ui automator okay so i need to add one capability as well so i'm just stopping this session okay okay so here we can see uh i have already uh, added that capability let me see this one so here i have already added that capability like a uh, automation name is equal to ui automated too okay this will this will provide us some extra functionality to the inspector elements so i'll just that one so here we have to add this capability as well okay automation name is equal to ui automated too now let's start the inspecting element again so here we go uh apm inspector is connecting with the device now we have launched we have okay so now let's refresh this page so we have to see in the home page uh login page okay okay so now let's understand uh here we have one some additional like accessibility id and android ui automator as well so okay so through that also we can find the elements so how to find that elements like this is the find elements is the, all that these are the attributes and these are the values okay this is the find element by accessibility id android uh, ui automator and xpath additionally given by the apm inspector and these are the attributes like element id index package name class name text uh, content text all these things through we can also create our x path like okay this one and these are the values of that particular attributes now let's understand this one is if you want to show the some hidden elements like like this we can uh check that for the hidden elements this one some uh, extra additional uh, uh like facilities provided in the apm inspector so this is the one latest apm inspector version right so we have to understand the feature related to the apm inspector first of all so this one is uh, like we have to inspect the element we can click on this simple like this same way we are clicking on the browser uh browser like um, icon and uh, we are inspecting the element in the cell name same way we can click here and inspect the element right okay now this one we were if you want to uh, swap from some coordinate let's say i want to see the uh internal side of the page this this page is uh, like uh, if i want to see the below side of this page so i just click on here and uh, just swap like this okay and here it's loading like and uh, it's scroll uh, to up and we can be able to see this site right if you want to scroll down we can simply scroll like this simple some logs going to the apm uh, like a um, desktop and uh, it will scroll like whatever you want to scroll so this is for swap with the coordinates right let's understand if you want to download this screenshot you can download and use again for the inspecting okay uh, that's not much of important and i'm just explaining you some important things related to this apm inspector you have to practice uh, the all the things okay whatever is here
So here we have some commands like uh, W3C architecture. Okay, we, if you want to get get, get window handles, if you, there is any web application or hybrid type of application, so uh, you can use this get window handles and everything. If you want to check the context, so get context, you can see here is a native app. Okay, if it is a hybrid app page, it will re uh, return us like a web app or anything like a web view or anything. So we, you can get the context and you can switch the context accordingly. Okay, if you have a web page, the web page here, like a web app, so we can navigate to get URL back and forward sessions, everything we can do. Okay, we can get the session uh, session related to this. Okay, get geolocations and everything. Okay, you just practice like this, open notification. If you click on this, it will open the device notification here. You can see this notification is open. Okay, right, like this. So you, you have to practice this type, get the device time and all everything. You can check that one, get performance data. Uh, you have to set up that performance here. Okay, package name and everything, and you can get that data. And SMS calls. Okay, if you are creating with the real devices, connecting with the real devices, then you can get that one. Now we get keyboard actions. Let's say please press key code. If you want to press particular key, you can click that one. Okay, that long press key code. Hide keyboard. Uh, is keyboard showing? So it's current keyboard open. No, it's false. Okay. So if I open the keyboard here, like for example this one. Okay, and uh, if uh, I refresh this one, this page, and uh, let's say is keyboard shown. Now it's it's written true because we have shown keyboard. So we have to practice this everything. It's is app lock. How many seconds you want to lock it? Okay, if I want to two seconds lock, you can execute this and it will lock for two seconds. Okay, after that is locked. If you want to check, you can check that one. Okay, if you want to null because it's uh, after the two seconds it will unlock okay you can push the file and everything you can you have to just practice this one i'm just uh give you a list let's just i want to provide you some overview to this get clipboards clipboard set clipboard start activity if you want to start any activity if you want to install any app is app installed check uh, with uh, app session id okay here we have app session id so that you can check that one Execute script you want to execute in a script from the command line, you can execute that one. So this is in the command. You have to practice this one. It's not that much of important in your automations, but you have to understand these features. Any feature related to, to this, like a uh, whenever you required any feature related to this, like a get context handle, you have to switch some uh, keyboard, you have to uh, do some deep linking that time. This key, uh, if you want to open keyboard, that time this command is important. So you can practice here and same way we can implement it in your code as well. Right. So you have some clusters here. You want to set the clusters. You can set that one. You have to record the screen. If I doing some action and if you click on this start recording session. So in the different different languages like Java, Python, Ruby, it will record the script for you in the JUnit frame. In the JUnit five frame. Okay. Let's say if I click on this. Okay. So it will record the script for you. Okay. The code will be get generated here in the J like whatever language you have selected like in this way. So session information is completely here. Like uh, this one, the session ID. This one is your uh, current uh, automation session URL. This is your host name. This is your path name. The length and the simple script is uh, with J, uh, J, JNL5. It's created here using Java. Right? So this is uh, the session related information in the APM inspector. Now, uh, let's understand this one. This is a... Uh, uh, very important while if you are working with the any hybrid or uh, web view related app so we have to inspect the element using this web view part okay you can simply go to here okay and uh, inspect the element related to the web view okay now we are currently using it uh, this is the native app so we have to switch over native app so this is one is related to the web view hybrid app if you want to inspect the related related to the web view hybrid app if you want to uh, refresh the screen, you can simply click on this and you can refresh the page. Okay, here. So if I want to click here, click it back. Let's say I want to click back, hide the keyboard, and then I want to see the same screenshot here. So I will refresh this one. Right. Now this is the one is very important. I'm stopping this recording. Now this one is very important. We have to test our ID, XPath, name, class name, max bit ID, UI automator. Okay, so we can test it here only. Okay, not again and again go to the your script and then we can test that one. So we have to test our XPath is correct, your ID is correct, your accessibility ID is correct or not here only. After that, we can implement that one. So here we have to go into the source. So this is the source code which is generated related to the app, right? For example, I want to test this username. So I am clicking on this. So this is our username. Through this, these are the attributes of that particular field, and these are the values. Through that, we can create the XPath. This is the same way for we have the password. This is the same way for the login. Same way we are clicking on the uh, 
in the like when you inspect the element in the Chrome or Firefox, we can see that HTML same way we are, we can see here the source. So we can click on it. Simple way we have uh, to like set up the username here. Okay, in that username. So these are the attributes and values for this. So this is very important part to like to search the ID and search the XPath, search the name and all this. So I'm just explaining you the some elements here, how to find out that. So here uh, we have given some XPath related to the um, XPath related to the this username field, right? So I'll just click on this XPath and set up that XPath here, right? So it will when I search this one, it will give us one element and it's highlighting right that this one is a one element related to the XPath. So this XPath is correct for the username, right? So I want to change and modify this XPath as per my requirements. So I'm gonna enter the star here and I will just I don't want this double inverted comma, so I'll just commit it out and just check with the single inverted comma. Yeah, so again, I'm able to find out the X path with the uh, this X path as well, right? So here is the content text, right? Uh, I just want to create a X path with this class name. If I want to click the create the X path related to this class name, so I'll remove this text username from here and I just paste the class name. And here I'm remove this content text as well and the paste it here as a class. Plus, and if I search this one, so I can find the two X path, two elements for this. So because the both element having the same class name like android uh, with edit text okay so now we have got two xpath is get edit text do two xpath with the same class right so what i can do i'll just go get back and i'll create a modify this xpath as per the my requirement so if i want to uh, click on the first username so i'll be doing the index here indexing here right then again i search so i'll get the single xpath for this so as per this requirement, you can modify your XPath and everything and test it here only in the AP inspector itself, right? After that, let's say I, I just want to find out the element using class name. So I can just simply copy this cl uh, class name from here. Okay, so class name is the considered as a tag name here, huh? guys. Let's understand that. So if I search this, again, I find the two elements. Same way in the class name, okay? So if I want to find out the element using accessibility ID, so I can just pass this accessibility ID and I'll test it. This exact ID will work in my test or not, right? So before using this in the test, we can test it here only. So it's working, right? Uh, same way we can check it for the uh, Android UI Automator only as well, right? So I'll just click on this Android UI Automator. And yes, perfect. We can able to find out this using this XPath and everything. So these are the most probably, and you can modify the XPath as per the username, text, Whatever. Okay, right. We have created this XPath using the content name here. If you want to create this XPath using text, you can use, test it as well. Okay, so here we can change this to text, right? Here is the text, and text is username. So I'll just go to here and just type text is equal to username, username, right? And uh, here also I don't want to use this text, I want to use star. This is my username. Right. And just search it. So okay, we can create the uh, X path using text as well. Okay. In star uh, tag name at the text is equal to username. We are selecting here username. Okay. So this is the mistake we have made made. Like UI automator, we are selecting and we're creating the X path. So if you click on X path only. Okay. Guys, this can be happen in the runtime as well. So uh, be careful when we create a XPath, you have to click XPath. When we create a class name, uh, check for the class name. We can we need to click class name. We have to check accessibility UI automator, then you have to click, click that. So we have to click on the XPath to create XPath. So this is the text related to XPath. We can create it at right. Correct. So now we have identified uh, and understand how to inspect the elements in the using your uh, like AP inspector to write. Uh, simple script in your automation framework. Now, uh, let's create a one simple like uh, automation script here uh, for the uh, Swag Lab login in red username. Okay, in the next session, guys. Hope you understand uh, some everything related to the APM inspector. In next session, we'll practically implement that script like the uh, Swag Lab login invite username. Okay. So little time you understand uh, the all the functions related to the APM inspector, like uh, how to scroll down the page and uh, all the source codes and everything, how to create and test the APM inspector. You can see do the same keys as well here, guys. This one 
uh, if I inspect this one uh, related to the username and I want to uh, like us do some send keys here, so you can you can simply send this from here, testing. And you can clear that text from here. Okay, you can copy to clipboard and uh, you can get time. And these are the uh, important, if you want to tap something like this, I want to tap on this particular element so I can click on it here. So, so that's it uh, about the APM inspector and their functionalities, uh, like how to create X path and how to test that one in X IDs and everything. And then in the next chapter, let's try to create a practical test related to the inverted logging user ID. Okay, we can automate that functionality here. Okay, so let's meet in this session. Till time, have a great day. Bye bye. Take care.